Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This video is about Gauss digamma theorem, which allows us to compute the digamma function for all rational arguments. The digamma function is the logarithmic derivative of the gamma function. So we have gamma of t. This is 1 over t, e to the minus small gamma of t, that's Euler's constant. And then we have an infinite product, k from 1 to infinity. We have e to the t over k, and then 1 plus t over k to the minus 1. Let's take the logarithm. Log of gamma t, this is minus log t, minus small gamma t, plus summation k from 1 to infinity. From here we get t over k, minus the logarithm of 1 plus t over k. Now, if we take the derivative with respect to t, recall that t is a complex number excluding the non-positive integers. If we take the derivative, we obtain the digamma function, which is our interest in this video. So it is minus 1 over t, minus a small gamma, plus summation k from 1 to infinity, 1 over k minus, if we differentiate this guy, 1 over k plus t. Let's change k to k plus 1. So psi of t is equal to minus 1 over t, minus a small gamma plus. If we replace k by k plus 1, then now the summation starts from 0 to infinity. This k is replaced by k plus 1, and now this guy becomes 1 over k plus 1 plus t, like this. Rather than leaving this guy lonely here, we can just join it. So we can erase this one and have this term, we can erase this plus one, so that when k is equal to zero, we have minus one over t, which is this term. Now, if k is one, we get one over one plus t. If k is two, we get one over two plus t, and so on and so forth. This is a series representation of the digamma function, and we are interested in a psi of p over q. These guys are positive integers, so we can replace this t by p over q. So this fraction here becomes q divided by p plus jq. Before proceeding, we call that minus log 1 minus z for a complex number z with a magnitude less than 1. This is summation n from 1 to infinity, z to the n divided by n. For our proof, we will make use of this summation. Summation n from 0 to q minus 1, and here we have a minus sign, e to the minus i 2 pi p n over q, and then the logarithm of 1 minus z multiplied by e to the i 2 pi n over q. If the magnitude of z is less than 1, then the magnitude here of this complex quantity is also less than 1 because the magnitude of this guy is exactly 1. We can expand this logarithm using this. We take the minus sign with this logarithm. We have summation m from 1 to infinity. Then we have 1 over m, and then we have these two guys together raised to the power m. This exponential is this one here, and we have the outer sum n from 0 to q minus 1. Now let's interchange the order of summation. If we do this, we have an outer sum with index m. Then we have 1 over m. Then we have this z to the power m. And the inner sum is summation n from 0 to q minus 1. What do we have? We have these two guys combined together. This is e to the i 2 pi n, and then we have m minus p divided by q. This is a cool sum. If q divides m minus p, if m minus p is a multiple of q, then this term here is in the form of e to the i 2 pi times an integer. That's 1. And the sum will be the number of terms, which is q. The summation is q if m minus p is divisible by q. Now, if m minus p is not divisible by q, then this sum is equal to 0. Because we have a finite geometric series, this is e to the i 2 pi m minus p divided by q, all raised to the power n. In the numerator, we have 1 minus, and then we have the ratio of the geometric series, and it is raised to the number of terms, which is q. So we get this thing. Note that this is e to the i 2 pi times an integer. That's 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. In the numerator, we have 0. In the denominator, we have 1 minus the ratio. Our assumption now is that Q does not divide M minus P. So this guy is not one. We have zero in the numerator. We have a non-zero quantity downstairs. And so this is zero. Our summation here is Q if M minus P is a multiple of Q. Otherwise, this summation is zero. We can write that M minus P is equal to KQ. That's where this summation is non-zero. And thus M is P plus KQ. These are the values of M for which this summation is equal to Q. We should have a Q here, and then this M and this M are replaced by P plus K times Q. And K runs from 0 to infinity. We will take P to be less than Q. That's not a problem because of the recurrence relation that Epsi of T plus 1 is equal to Epsi of T plus 1 over T. Let's now go back to our digamma function, Epsi of P over Q. Again, this is the series representation. Now we replace T by P over Q, which will result in this expression here. This summation can be written down in another way. We introduce here z to the b plus jq, and then outside the sum, we take the limit as z tends to 1 from the negative side. We can just take z here to be greater than or equal to 0 and less than 1. This is Abel's limit theorem. Abel's limit theorem tells us that if we have summation g of n, and let's say from 0 to infinity, 
and then we have summation n from zero to infinity g of n times z to the n so this is big g of z if this summation is finite and is equal let's say to l then the limit as z tends to one of g of z exists and is exactly equal to l so this is what we are doing here this is a convergent sum and so we can apply Abel's limit theorem this summation is exactly equal to this limit that we have here look at what we have and this justifies you know those mysterious initial steps in those steps again we started by minus log one minus z out of nowhere we studied a summation of those guys in which z is multiplied by e to the i 2 pi n over q and then we had this outside factor and we discovered that this summation here is this sum right now if you look this is exactly what we have here so this quantity we can do things in reverse and we can rewrite this summation as this summation involving the logarithm then there is another summation which is summation z to the p plus jq divided by j plus one if n is equal to zero here what we have is log one minus z let's start the sum from n equals one and then we have this is the term corresponding to n equals zero log one minus z this other sum we can take z to the p minus q as a common factor and then we have the series expansion of log one minus z to the q so this here is z to the p minus q then z to the q all to the power j plus one this guy together with j plus one this is the expansion of minus one times log one minus z over q and then we have this guy here let's rewrite these two terms so we have minus z to the p minus q we write log one minus z to the q divided by one minus z then we added the extra term plus z to the p minus q log one minus z so we need to subtract it minus z to the p minus q log one minus z and we have this guy here which is log one minus z we end up with this and with this now let's see what will happen if we take limits here if we take the limit as z tends to one the b log factor just goes to one then we have here one minus z to the q over one minus z as z tends to one this tends to q we have minus log q this is the limit of this term now for this if we take the limit as z tends to one then we just get zero from here we have minus log q and then we still have this minus small gamma and the summation here Thus, our current situation is that xi of p over q, positive integers, and again, without loss of generality, p less than q. This is minus small gamma, minus log q, and then we still have the summation here, summation n from 1 to q minus 1, e to the minus i to pi p n over q, and then the logarithm. Let's replace p by q minus p in this formula. So there is this p. This becomes e to the i 2 pi p n over q. Psi of p over q plus psi of 1 minus p over q we get minus 2 small gamma minus 2 log q and then here this is the same like that but these two exponentials they have a different sign so together they give us 2 cosine 2 pi p n over q by euler's reflection formula this sum is pi times cosec pi p over q and this side here the left hand side is real valued here we have this logarithm write e to the i 2 pi n over q as cosine plus i sine and then write this as magnitude so that's the magnitude of this complex valued quantity then we have e to the minus i then 10 inverse sine over 1 minus cosine this logarithm is minus i 10 inverse and we have from here one half log if we expand this we get one and then cosine squared plus sine squared that's two and then we have minus two cosine two pi n over q among all these terms this is the only term that is multiplied by minus i in other words, if we equate the real and imaginary parts of both sides, we get that the sum n from 1 to q minus 1 of cosine times this arc 10, this is 0. Equating the left-hand side to the real part of the right-hand side, we get our equation 1. From Euler's reflection formula, we know that gamma of x times gamma 1 minus x is by cosec by x. Take the logarithm of both sides and then differentiate. This becomes epsi of x. This becomes epsi of 1 minus x, and then there is a minus sign. And when we differentiate logarithm of cosec pi x, we get minus pi times cotangent by x. Put x equal to p over q, and we get equation 2. Now, by adding these two equations, this goes with that. We get that 2 epsi p over q is equal to minus 2 gamma minus 2 log q. And then we have the summation here. Dividing both sides by 2, we get that epsi of p over q is minus gamma minus pi over 2 cotangent pi p over q minus log q and then we have half the summation here we can rewrite this 2 minus 2 cosine 2 pi n over q as 4 sine squared pi n over q 
And so this is 2 sine pi n over q all squared. We can take the square and eliminate this one half. And this is our desired result. Note that the sum can be cut in half because of these relations here. As an example, epsilon of 3 over 5 is minus gamma, minus pi over 2. Then we have cotangent pi, 3 pi over 5, minus the natural logarithm of 5. Plus, here we have four terms in this summation. And because of these relations, we have we can just compute two of the terms. The first one corresponding to small n equal to 1. We have cosine 2 pi times 3 over 5, log 2 sine pi over 5, plus cosine 2 pi times 6 over 5, log 2 sine 2 pi over 5.